I read once that a party has a pathology just like an individual. The writer, I think it was Steinbeck, said that a party's pathology is perverse and that it will never act as expected or planned. It was a bright morning, but the light only accentuated the drab and unwelcoming nature of our street. Still, it's home, I thought. But for how long? Notices appeared on our street recently, proclaiming that the area is to be demolished and that residents are to leave as soon as possible. Some of the notices are almost figurative in declaring their intent. As you can imagine, this hasn't generated a sense of well-being in our soon-to-be disbanded community. I suspect for many of our regular visitors, our disappearance will be a minor inconvenience before they make their way to an equally neglected part of the city. I decided to escape the oppressive air that had descended on our street and go beyond the city walls if only for a day. I thought a walk in the countryside would no doubt provide a distraction from the city's ills. I cycled to the train station and made my way there by little used back streets and alleyways to avoid the crowds and traffic. I arrived at the station and locked my bike outside. Inside, the station intercom made announcements to an unreceptive audience of one or two disinterested station employees. I looked at the timetable and decided to travel on the next available train. After purchasing a ticket, I entered a carriage and had a choice of seat due to the scarcity of any fellow travellers. The engine sounded, and my journey from the city began. At the next stop, a gentleman entered my carriage and sat at an opposing seat. We exchanged the usual pleasantries, and then discussed the weather, politics, and the economy, or lack thereof. I was in good spirits to be leaving the city and enjoyed the conversation. He was getting off at the next stop but before disembarking he asked if I had ever read any works by Blake. I said I was familiar with his work but not intimately. He then quoted a verse from one of his poems, The Human Abstract. Pity would be no more if we did not make somebody poor, and mercy no more could be if all were as happy as we. The train continued on its journey, and as I settled back in my seat, I considered his words.
I arrived at my destination and I made my way from the station. An unsettling quiet lingered in the deserted streets. I had the strange impression that the few passers-by I met were merely acting a part to convince me that normality existed in the town. The stores, shopfronts and homes looked like they were nothing more than film sets with empty spaces behind their facade. I decided to test this notion and I entered a small cafe. My thoughts of unreality were quickly dispelled as a typical cafe interior lay within. There was a bell on the door that alerted the owner to my presence. I took a seat by the window and ordered some food. As I waited, I perused a copy of the local paper. One story in the paper caught my eye new ruins appear. It explained how an unusual construction had appeared, literally overnight, in a field just outside the town. After my lunch, I asked the proprietor about the new ruins, and he said they were within walking distance if I was of a mind to view them. I left the cafe and made my way as per the directions given. On the outskirts of the town, the number of unfinished houses and dormant construction sites caught my attention. Their half-finished nature and abandonment lent an unease and loneliness that permeated the area. I stopped and examined one and wondered what future generations would make of these homes that were never inhabited. I was still about a mile from the new ruins, so I continued on my way along the winding country road. A strange structure became visible on the horizon, and with my interest peaked, a briskness entered my step. I climbed over a hedgerow and stood and stared at the incongruous assemblage of concrete that now dominated the surroundings. pillars appear to rise into the clear sky and their cold cracked surface seemed like a reflection of their environment.
made my way to the epicenter and pondered the significance of the new ruins. There was an unworldly silence within, and the sun hung low, creating long dark shadows that enveloped the uneven ground. After pacing the circumference of destruction, I made my way from the field. I was back on the road again, and at the beginning of my journey home, new ruins disappeared in the distance, and it was then that I remembered my bike and hoped it was okay. <laughs> 